Here we have an HP ProLiance ML115G5 quad core. As you can see from the form factor, nice and compact, makes it ideal for a uh, work or lab environment, particularly at home where space, space may be at a premium. Uh, at the front here you can see two USB 2 ports, so good for front side USB connectivity. Just above that a off on power button, and above that a uh, single CD DVD uh, rewriter. So um, down here at the front we've got the ventilation, uh, typical uh, sort of HP and I guess general desktop uh, configuration, sucks the air through the front, out across the discs everything for cooling and then out the back of the server. So let's have a look around the back. So here we are around the back of the ML115G5 quad core now. At the top there you see the uh, power supply, just below that the um, extraction fan uh, for the cooling. Over to the left hand side here, two PS2 ports, one for keyboard, one for mouse as would be expected. A single serial port, a uh, video output port, and then below that you've got four USB 2 ports. So in total on the server you've got seven USB ports, you've got two on the front, the four on the back here, plus one on the system board that I'll show you shortly. Uh, you've got a single uh, network port here, this is a gigabit ethernet port uh, from the NC105i uh, chipset. And below here you'll see a, um, a port, or a cut blanking plate rather, um, for the um, Lights Out 100C card, which is an optional extra for this uh, particular model. And uh, below that you'll see the four slots, um, now these are for the uh, three PS, um, P PSI Express uh, slots and the single PCI slot, uh, which I'll also show you shortly. So over here, you've got a tag um, that you can put a padlock on or some securing device uh, if you want to stop people getting inside the server, if it's for a uh, like a remote branch or similar. And uh, you've uh, got a screw here, you undo that to pull the side of the case off. So that comes off nice and easily, and uh, let's have a look inside. Here we have the ML115G5 with the side panel off now. Uh, as you can see, top left hand corner here, we've got a, th a single 365 watt power supply that powers everything. Uh, at the top here we've got the CD DVD ROM writer, um, and down here you've got a single 160 gigabyte uh, SATA hard disk, uh, 7200 RPM. Um, coming across here, the extraction fan. Over the back there, you'll see four uh, memory DIMM slots. Um, a standard when you buy one of these servers that comes with a gigabyte of memory that's not really sufficient for doing most things these days. Uh, I always populate mine with either four or take it up to the maximum eight gigabytes uh, of memory in total so uh, I would normally populate all these slots with two gigabyte DIMMs and um, those DIMMs there they're um, uh, PC2 6400 DDR2 uh, memory DIMMs that go in there. So, heading on down, uh, CPU uh, cooling fan, and underneath this fan here is a single AMD Opteron uh, 1354 CPU running at 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, nice little CPU, uh, the, one of the great things with it is it is actually compatible with VMware's uh, fault tolerance uh, feature. So if you've got a pair of these servers, you can put them together and you can actually perform fault tolerance of your VMs between the two, if you, assuming you've got a shared storage that is. So, uh, great CPU there. I've never had a problem with uh, maxing it out before. I generally always run out of memory uh, before I run out of CPU power on here. So, looking on down, there's four expansion slots. So, you've got a single uh, PCI, 32-bit, uh, 33 MHz um, uh, slot at the bottom. Then you've got three PCI Express slots, a times one, times eight, and 16 times slot there. And if you're wondering what the strange little slot is over the back here, uh, that's actually for the ILO, or sorry, the Lights Out 100 uh, card, which is that optional extra which you can have. And that gives you sort of the, um, uh, like a cut down version of the, um, the ILO type functionality that you'd get with a 300 or 500 series HP ProLiant server. So just looking over here, you've got five SATA slots in total, um, four are for the disk, uh, the onboard. Uh, SATA controller, which also has RAID. Uh, I've had difficulty running um, uh, VMware ESX um, with the RAID turned on. Most people I, I know have had similar problems. Uh, I think, well, I believe there are a few hacks and workarounds you can do, but I generally, um, uh, just because of the problems I've had with it in the past, I'd like to keep it simple. So uh, I actually uh, have some shared storage that I um, hook my servers into. Uh, there's a single USB port here as well, internal. Now this comes in very useful. Um, for people like myself, I like to run ESXi. And um, basically I, I, I 
uh, copy, make a copy onto a uh, USB pen drive, insert it into here, change the boot priority order so it boots off this port first, and bingo, comes up with the SXI nice and quick. Uh, plus that means I've got 100% of the storage here, the SATA storage, um, assuming I'm not using sh shared storage as dedicated um, disk for my VMs or ISO images or something similar. Okay, just down here, last thing, um, you've got these uh, blue tabs here. These are for, for uh, full length um, uh, PCI Express cards that you may have. For example, if you've got a uh, something like an HP E200 uh, controller, disc controller, that's actually a full length card, so that would actually take the full width of the uh, of the um, chassis there pretty much. So this, uh, the end of the card, just slots into there, just gives it a bit of stability. And uh, that's pretty much the inside, as you can see. Nice clean layout, very straightforward, and uh, room for expansion, uh, both through the uh, expansion ports, the memory at the top there, and also the disk. So there we are, that's the uh, HP ProLiant ML115G5 quad-core. Uh, great little server, especially for the money, uh, offers great bang for buck for a uh, home or small work lab. Uh, environment works very well. I've been using mine for over a year now without any problems. Uh, like I mentioned previously, it's got good expansion as well and handles most things that I can throw at it. Uh, it's lacking a few of the normal sort of um, features that you see in more um, more of the enterprise level servers, such as the DL360, 380, and 500 series ProLiance, such as the uh, uh, the, the, the more high-powered um, uh, array controller cards that are integrated onto the system board, uh, the integrated ILO, and things such as uh, hot plug disks, uh, etc. But, uh, you know, for a lab environment, you're generally not looking for that sort of functionality anyway. Uh, it's a nice to have, but for the money, you really can't go far wrong with one of these great little servers.